up, everybody? A very big hello from myself, Jack. Boris, just over here, our very little friend who likes to drink a lot of Russian vodka. Ben, who's just over there in the corner. And this is going to be sort of the first of probably very many fan fictions. This is going to be our first one. And before we start off with a bit of a doozy, because why not? If you either you go big or go home. So obviously, I'm assuming that everybody here has watched Avengers Endgame. You all remember the snap. Thanos, the whole deal, everybody disappears, gets dusted, and then five years later, blah, 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 blah. But instead, we're going to do the exact same thing, progress all the films right up until the snap happened. But, except when the snap happens, we're going to get rid of the cast that were left. So it's going to be the complete mirror opposite. So we're going to get rid of the characters that were left, and obviously the other characters will get dusted. Just to see how this film is going to go it's a bit theory a bit spitballing is that pretty much all it is on this channel but it would be a fun concept to talk about because why not let's produce a fan fiction and let's get ready to run <laughs> <laughs> okay so when we start this fan fiction off if just from the top of my head obviously we had black panther who got dusted yeah, it was the majority of the Wakanda nation. It was uh, Spider Man. Got dusted. Spider Man yeah. got dusted. Peter got dusted. We had Winter Soldier and Falcon, and last but not least, Scarlet Witch, aka Wanda Maximoff. Um, now, and Nick oh, Fury. and of course, one other thing Ant Man's team. Yep, yeah, and Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't really play much of a part. So, right, what we're doing, guys, we're keeping all these kit. We're keeping all these characters here. But everybody else, which is going to mean Iron Man's gone, Captain America's gone. Uh, let me see. That mean Hulk would be gone. Who else would be gone? Uh, you'd have pretty much the entire roster of the Avengers team. So, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk. And Black Widow, Hawkeye as well. And <sighs> I mean, the thing is, you can't technically count Loki because he died before the snap anyway. So, yeah, you can't count him. He's discounted. <laughs> Korg, Meek, whatever Asgardians were left, like Valkyrie, I suppose yeah. they could be wiped out. Although, mind you, when we were talking about this whole concept, which you argued with, uh, where, like, as you were arguing about with the cast that are left, the characters which are left, that this whole thing could have been solved much quicker than in five years. Oh, why'd God. You reckon, yeah. Why'd you reckon that? Because there's one critical thing. Ant-Man would have been able to get out of the quantum realm. Well, yeah, that's the key aspect, is that Ant-Man would have come out the quantum realm a lot sooner because obviously there's the team that understand the tech but technically i think doctor strange would have been able to lend a hand as well because obviously being doctor strange he understands that there is the quantum realm and god knows what else as well so with that it as exposure well it, as it um at the expose uh, that yeah. withstanding blah, 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 yeah blah, blah, blah. whatever <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Put your teeth in, Ben. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I had some taken out recently, but that's another story. <laughs> but given the fact that it's Doctor Strange, he's aware of all these little nooks and crannies of the universe, Yeah, it wouldn't take much for him to basically go, right, i got to pop into the quantum realm, grab this guy that can basically do the same, but a lot more techie than it is magic, grab his team, go, right, we're going here, there, everywhere, get all of this, and we're done. Like, yeah. at the general gist, I don't think you'd even need... I suppose, to a degree, the Wakandans could be useful because, obviously, when Thanos did snap, it damaged the gauntlet. So, you could technically have the Wakandan tech and the vibranium as the useful product to be able to make a new gauntlet. I don't, but think, then... I don't think Spidey will be much use in this one. <laughs> I would argue that Spidey would probably try to lend a hand with Shuri, but obviously Shuri probably trying to tell him to go away because it's Shuri. Spidey, if anything, he would be the one that just wanted to keep an eye on New York while everything else was going on. 
because obviously, given that Thanos completely abandoned his team, because I don't think they even confirm if any of the team gets, like, his Black Order gets wiped out from the snap either. No, we only know it's more about, it's a, like, a, it's a 50-50 shot, but I like being wiped out, so it's 50-50, give or take. Mm. So when you got that 50-50, that's a good half of all my life in the universe, we're obviously encapsulating everything. But then again, the thing which, like, even with real world things, does that mean, like, a president's gone, that the queen's gone, that the prime minister's gone, people in power, but obviously we got to stick to the Avengers. And so... When you've got Doctor Strange and you've got Ant-Man, two critical key players as to maybe being able to solve this problem much quicker, in my opinion. Mm. No, I definitely agree, because the whole reason why Endgame ended up being what it was is because they relied on Ant-Man full stop. Like The whole point was that he was able to manipulate the time stream via pin particles going through the quantum realm. Now, given the fact that Doctor Strange has as Arsenal the Time Stone already, and he understands the Time Stone, I mean, the other thing as well we both said was that if Ant Man hadn't have been stuck in the Quantum Realm, he could have gone back, well, gone through the Quantum Realm again and grabbed the Reality Stone and all the other stones because Thanos didn't destroy them; they only got shrunk down to atoms. Because that's obviously, all what day. size can that man shrink to? Well, even subatomic, which is even smaller than atoms. But again, it's a problem that's solved so quick, but so simple. But at the same, at the same time, would there be a need for like the machine which we had, which is able to transport them back with pin particles and such? Would we need that machine? <sighs> I think the thing is with the machine was that it was more of a controlled way of doing it because Ant Man already went subatomic already in his first movie. That was the whole reason why yeah. they explored more of it for the second one. But then again, I don't know whether it means that you'd have to take the whole unit with you to where you wanted to be to try and be in that particular area yeah. as a. Yeah, because it does mean you'll have to get to you'll have to go through the exact same spots. But then again, I suppose if you're able to go back in time, it depends if maybe someone is actually able to keep hold of that space stone, you know, before it gets knocked out of Stark's hands. But then Stark wouldn't technically be there, present day Stark, so it'd be somebody else. But then it'd still have that chance to um well, depends how it would replay out. Would Loki still get the Space Stone, or would they manage to keep hold of the Space Stone? That's one factor, which is a little bit hard to work out. Uh, well, I don't think even that would matter anyway, because if Ant-Man... Because the thing is as well, if you remember during Endgame, they managed to go back to Guardians of the Galaxy, where Star-Lord picks up the power orb from yes. the random planet, so but they don't explain how they around. get there. Like they literally go through the quantum realm and they just appear there. So by that logic, the quantum realm is obviously a universal gateway to any point in time and any space in time. So technically you wouldn't even need to move the unit itself. You just need to know the right coordinates, both space and time. And obviously, given the fact that you'd have to, well... Thanos did the stab in Wakanda, so all you need to do was make sure after Wakanda he goes to Titan, so you'd have to go to Titan, Yeah. get the get the stones from Titan either just before he snaps again, or just after, so that you could retrieve them before they shrunk too far, and then go back to Earth, make the gauntlet, and it'd be over and done with. Yeah, so would like would it? Yeah, so would you argue that maybe the five years that happened would never have happened in the first place? It'd just be immediately straight after if they had a game plan. I'd imagine it'd be like five hours, give or take. Yeah, like it would take time for Shuri to design the gauntlet to make it work with the vibranium, obviously to try and understand what was going on. Given the fact that also that Nick Fury survived, he'd have the bleeper for Captain Marvel, 
which would be the best way of trying to either get her to subduce Thanos enough to get the gauntlet. Actually, that would be a better way of doing things. If they were to get hold of Captain Marvel, they could bring her with them just before the whole snap happened in the first place. Given the fact that she is more powerful than Hulk, which I still disagree with, but that's a whole other story in itself. But because she is so powerful, and given her powers do come from one of the many Infinity Stones, so do Scarlet Witches, the two of them together could subdue Thanos long enough for him to not cause the snap in the first place, and they could get the gauntlet off him, so then none of it would have happened. Ah, so this film could have been over very quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it would have been a paradox in itself, but then given the fact that Doctor Strange is all about like time and magic and all that gubbins, he would find a way of making it work, but I'm sure that he would have to make a bargain with somebody, like he did with Dormammu in his first movie, but that would have been quite an interesting plot. <laughs> yeah, no, Dormammu! Dormammu! I come to bargain! <laughs> yeah, because... The one thing that I've seen time and time again when it came to people nitpicking the whole fights throughout Infinity War was that why didn't Doctor Strange do the mirror dimension? That was the first thing that he could have done to stop any of it happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, because they even say in his first movie that the mirror dimension, whatever happens in that, doesn't affect the rest of reality because it's a pocket dimension that's in the normal reality but just off so so it's not going to produce a butterfly effect no i mean the thing is thanos doesn't understand the art of magic he just understands the concept of each of the stones and what they do so yeah. therefore he wouldn't be able to get out of the mirror dimension without dr strange's help which again makes me wonder what the hell was he doing throughout the entire film besides floating and looking like he had Tourette's or like a na nervous twitch. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was a cool concept, don't get me wrong, but it just kind well, this of... Could have, this all could have been sorted out very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was more the idea that they wanted to prolong the idea because obviously the Avengers have been away for so long from one another... And while I understand the whole point of Endgame was to finalise the whole Avengers story and Tony story, I don't understand why it took so long for them to figure out something so simple. I don't because, either. I but mean, the thing again, is, does it depend on Ant-Man that, that a rat somehow managed to crawl across his machine? He managed to pop back. Well, this is the thing. I always wonder whether it was Doctor Strange nudged the rat to do it, so that's why he went in time so far and then came back. Because obviously, like time travel, it like doesn't matter. You can go forward and back in an instant. But I just realised one other thing. They never confirmed whether or not Wong got like snapped as well. No. So, obviously, I know his main objective is to keep the whole balance of the universe and the magic side of things. So why didn't Stark go find Wong as soon as he got back to Earth? He could have gone to the Sanctum Centaurum, because I can guarantee that would have been, like, either Infinity Stone proof or something, so nothing could have happened. So he could have then got someone who knows just enough about the Infinity Stones, if not more, than everyone else. And then they could have figured out a better plan than just going to Titan, beating the living crap out of Thanos for no reason, and then chop his head off. Well, yeah, I suppose so. But let's just say that the um let's just say that like the the characters that we were left with, obviously, were the ones who got dusted for this fan fiction. They get snapped back. And would you say, like, for the fight and, like, what happened with Tony's death and so on, which, if any of you lot don't know that Tony Stark has died yet, like, you've been under a rock for so long, but would you argue that those events would carry out the same way? I reckon that they might not, to be honest. I don't reckon that fight would have ended up the same way. I would say it would have changed to a degree, 
I don't know if it sounds a bit of a cheesy idea, but I would have liked the idea that all the Avengers, like, unify to use it together to, like, siphon off the power surge so it wouldn't cause any of them to get hurt. Because, obviously, the main reason why Tony died is because he's human. Like, the amount of gamma radiation they even said in the film, which, again, is a bit piss poor. But, yeah, but that's why it made no sense for, like, when... Like for when Tony was arguing with, like, was trying to argue like with Banner at first to say that Banner, that Banner, like, like did the snap, arm got burnt, which makes no sense because Hulk is a scroll. End of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we are sticking by that completely in this channel. That because the thing that really bugs me, okay, with Infinity War, there was a deleted scene where Bruce basically is obviously in the Hulk Buster suit. He sees Thanos and it triggers Hulk to manifest again because he's so miffed off with the last fight they had that he beats the living crap out of him and it would have ended the movie. Again, it would have proved my point that Hulk is better than Thanos. Okay, Hulk, I do not... Hulk versus Thanos in, at the start of Infinity War. Hulk would not have lost. End of. But this is it. Like, I just don't understand why they had to screw with Hulk. Like, Hulk is not a complicated character to do. Obviously, there are a lot of things to him. But it's not difficult to have a rage monster beat the living crud out of Thanos. That's literally all he is there for. Because the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. That's the yeah. point. It's very easy. <sighs> That's but... why there is no chance that Thanos could have beaten Hulk unless... He was a scroll. I think the only way that Thanos could actually defeat Hulk is if he was actually as powerful as he is in the comics and if he even had a power boost on top of that. Because the one thing that I really hate when it comes to live adaptations is they always seem to like downgrade and I don't get why. Like, I don't know. You cannot realistically produce the concept of a guy going from six foot to seven, eight foot green raging Hulk thing that just basically smashes everything. That's not possible. <laughs> Given the fact you might find something similar in the gym, but that's due to something else, not gamma radiation. But yeah, it looks like almost like my vape juice. It's my Hulk blood. <laughs> oh, God. Although. Go, although going from that to some degree, obviously, like you said, we'll get off this topic in a minute, folks. But obviously, the first red flag for you was that fat was that Hulk lost to Thanos. First red flag. Then Hulk was like for some reason scared to come out and fight. Second red flag. And when he was Professor Hulk, got burned by the gauntlet and his arm never healed, mm. which was another red flag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just. It's just nagging at me too much that the way that they write Hulk for the MCU, obviously they've had to tweak things because Universal still own the rights to him. That's the sad story behind all of this. But the thing is, at the end of the day, if you want to try and make money off a character, you have to try and give him a chance instead of them just going, yeah, we just did this because we couldn't really do much because we don't own the rights for it. But... <sighs> What's the point? If well, if you're not going to do it right, what's the point in doing it at all? <laughs> exactly. Although, uh, yeah. But let's get back to like the topic today. So the main thing as well, and the main big fight of Endgame was that you had Thanos from 2014 come to 2023 via the pin particles. That wouldn't have happened at all. Technically, that wouldn't have happened at all because if you think about it. it Thanos from uh, 2018, which is where like Endgame sort of begins from, is too tired, too exhausted from the two snaps that he'd done. He would have been subdued by either Captain Marvel or whoever would have been there at the time. You don't know which of his side of the universe, of his team, survived the snap because he couldn't control what snapped. He just wanted half of the life gone. So given the fact that he wouldn't have had the entire arsenal that he had already, 
the event, the people that would have been left would have wiped them out within an instant. Yeah. So therefore, you wouldn't have had much of a fight scene between them all. And the only thing is, like I say, it would be just bringing back the other half of reality. And again, I don't even know they would want to do the scene where they get rid of Thanos, because obviously there wasn't enough of Thanos left. No. So... Ironically, it would have been the perfect Disney ending. It would have been that everyone got a happy ending. Yeah, but that's like this is why, like I said to you after I watched Endgame ages ago, that it could, didn't have to end the way that it ended. It didn't no. have to end the way it ended. Like even the, these fan fictions, especially for Endgame, since we're on it, can go many different ways. Like I, I suggested to you, like what would happen if Tony Stark had survived, which. Would have been his perfect ending. I don't see why that couldn't have happened. But then again, it was because of the power of the stones and everything. But then, then people made the arguments about, yeah, but couldn't they preserve his life as well? And I'm like, yeah, true, but not true at the same time. It's a difficult one. I mean, the only thing I would have changed is that instead of killing him off, it could have made him paralysed or some kind, so he couldn't ever become Iron Man again. So it drains. So at least he would have been paralyzed from the waist down. Arguably, of course, that's the same for War Machine. But given that Iron Man had Pepper and his daughter, it would have been more of a reason to stay paralyzed and not be Iron Man anymore. Yeah, like I, yeah, that sort of like makes a bit more sense. But then again, I would have thought, even though obviously it started with like Tony, it started with Tony and everything like that. Even though really it starts with Hulk, but we'll leave that to one side. But um, I would have argued that the best person to make the snap should have been Captain America. But that's yeah. just my opinion. I mean, the thing is, there is supposedly coming to Disney Plus all the various what ifs of like based around the MCU. And I think there could have been a concept, I don't know if it is going to happen, the idea that what if Captain America did do the snap? And I think he would have had a lot better chance, given that he's got the super soldier serum. Yeah. But at the same point, it would be quite intriguing to see if it had any effect on him at all. This is the hard bit. We're just making these up as we go. I mean, you could, in a way, it could be so draining on him that it ends up that he loses the Super Soldier Serum. Because there is a comic story where he loses the Super Soldier Serum, which causes him to turn into an old man. So he's still got that he's still alive, but he's an older man version, which still work, works as, like, Cap, but he runs S.H.I.E.L.D. And then he has, still dates um, Peggy Carter's niece. And then after that, he gets his youthfulness revived via the Tesseract. And then it leads into something called Secret Empire, which turns out that Captain America, this version of Captain America, is actually a Hydra agent. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Now, of course... Yeah, so while I don't know if they would ever, well, could ever play on that concept, because they hinted towards it in Endgame when they got that lift scene during the like bit where he's trying to get the Cosmic Cube. But at the same point, it was only like a little nod. It wasn't like the full concept of the story. Yeah. But I think that would have been... Interesting had Chris Evans not said that he didn't want to be Captain America anymore because he has given up wanting to be Cap, but he could come back at a later point as either like a voice role or something in the many live action thing me bobs. Yeah, well, that's why I thought that maybe it should have been. I always thought, yeah, I understand the way the story was going there. It was like Tony's full arc and everything like that, but at the same time. I felt like it should have been. I felt like it should have been Cap who made the snap. I'm sorry because obviously he like he's gone. He's gone back with Peggy. He buggered off. So mm -hmm. you, know, you were never going to see him. But whereas I felt that would have 
extended a lot more for Iron Man, especially for his daughter, for Tony's daughter as well. I feel like there was like a whole missed story there, which hopefully we may get a what if in the future at some point with that. But there's many what ifs to do with Avengers. Like you suggested another one to me of uh, what if Vision never happened? What if they failed to create Vision? Yeah, see, that I find would have been the most the most drastically different, considering that prior to that, that the Mind Stone had only been part of Loki's scepter, then Hydra got it, and he, they used it on Wanda and her brother. Other than that, there wasn't much of a reason for the Mind Stone to exist, because I can't even remember why... Ultron wanted the Mind Stone. Like, I think he was after it, and it was Tony and Hulk that ended up getting it before him. Although, since since we're on that, since we're on that, I think the end. I think sort of the ending from Age of Ult. I think the Age of Ultron would have continued relatively the same way. I think. I think, the, degree, I think the film would have ended up the same. To a degree, yes. But, given the fact that, obviously, making Vision was the whole purpose of counteracting all the AIs, because it thinks as fast as an AI, everyone else on the Avengers team is only human or biological. Like they, At the end of the day, there was only so much they could all do, because Ultron was able to make so many various versions of himself in, like, a day, if that. Yeah. So... I suppose the other thing as well is the fact that it was the first time that we saw somebody else lift Thor's hammer in the entirety of the MCU. Yeah, which I but... remember, like, on the internet, everybody was going mental when, like, he lifted Thor's hammer. Everybody was going nuts on the internet in forums and such. But again, that's another thing, because... Yeah, because the thing is, is like the, all the Avengers just assume that they beat Ultron by the end of the movie, but there's one left, if you remember, and that's what Vision destroys. Mm -hmm. But given that Vision doesn't destroy it if he doesn't exist, that version of Ultron could either have oh. gone to... Yeah, exactly. So that one could have survived, could have gone to Wakanda, built himself a new Vibranium body, and either could have conquered the Earth again, or he could have left Earth entirely explored the galaxy and gone from there. Yeah, well, can you imagine if Ultron would have teamed up with Thanos? I don't know if he would have, though. I don't because know. I wouldn't be so sure. Well, the whole reason why Ultron came about was that it was down to Stark basically wanting to create a shield around the whole... Well, a suit around the whole world. But due to the flaw of him thinking that it was humanity's fault for existing causing the chaos or whatever i'd argue that he would see all organic life as an issue because he's a robot like he's only one set mind so if anything he could have come across thanos could have come across him and tried to like manipulate him to try and gain some semblance of being part of the black order or whatever and then if he would have listened long enough, he would have found out about the whole Infinity Stones and everything. And he would have probably done it himself and probably stopped the entire universe so there wouldn't be any organic left life. Yeah, exactly. Because oh he my would've... God. Yeah, that's a fan fiction in itself which you, which you just come up with. Imagine if Ultron made the snap. Well, the thing is, because he's not organic, he wouldn't have had the limitations... He would have had his body made out of vibranium, so it would have absorbed all the like gamma radiation and everything else in between. And if anything, he could have reshaped the entire reality to all be him. So there would be Jesus. literally nothing. Yeah. Oh my god. So, I. Again, it's one of these things that people don't realise how dominating certain characters are. Because Ultron, the whole premise behind him is the fact that he just wants to control everything. That's literally all he is. Yeah. But, I, I mean, the other thing as well, 
I don't know whether he could have snapped the entire like organic life in all of reality, mm. or whether or not he could have tweaked it so that all life was half him. So it would have been like every piece of organic life would have been like a cyborgy Ultron. True, or because obviously we've seen he has the power to control like any kind of like tech. He pretty much made what's his face a billionaire within seconds. I can't remember his it's name. Silver. Yeah, that's it. Like, imagine if he had, like, basically putting, me- putting like, man, human beings back into the Stone Age and basically disabled any form of technology that there was. Oh, that would have been incredible. Imagine that. Because, oh, God, that would be just insane. Basically taking us back to the Stone Age, that would affect pretty much everyone. Like, Tony, it would affect, like... Ant Man, so much. Because the other thing as well is, I'd argue that he would probably end up creating factories to tra- create like Ultron drones of sorts to patrol sectors around the globe. Because <sighs> the other thing as well, I just thought of something else. Given the fact that he is technology from Tony Stark, I can imagine him building a giant arc reactor in the middle of the Earth to use as a defence weapon for anything that came across. Oh, Christ. <laughs> like, you imagine the damage of like a normal like arc reactor, like, and then there's one that's planet-sized. <laughs> that would have been insane. So, sort of, if Vision never happened, the world would be seriously screwed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, oh my god, we'd have to flesh. I think we might have to flesh out that fan fiction a bit more at a later date. Yeah, I mean, we have come across like various ideas of what ifs because there's been so much potential within the MCU to tweak and twiddle certain things within the movies. Excuse me. I mean, the biggest one we both said was what if Tony Stark never survived from being held captive? Yeah, like, what if he died in the very first film? Well, because the thing is, the whole concept was that it was a makeshift suit to get him out of where he was. Yeah. But it was part... It was part from missiles that was his own technology. But given the fact that it was in a cave where there's sand and obviously, like, tech doesn't work well when it's full of sand or whatever else, and... The other thing is, well, the guy that saved him, the only reason he survived was because he went out the door and shot them all, and then he got shot. So what if that guy didn't have the incentive to go out and shoot the guards to give Tony, like, the extra two minutes he needed? Ah. Like, given the fact that the guards would have come through the doors, the suit wouldn't be ready yet. They could have blasted the technology so he wouldn't have been able to move from the suit. Oh, Christ. They could have... The suit wasn't even bulletproof because it was just makeshift panels from the various um, bombs or whatever that they had. And plus, they could I have literally. He was, I know he was, getting, he was getting shot all over the place, so I know he had like a top, like a slit, like here. But it only just takes one bullet just to. Yeah. I. The whole reason why he got kidnapped, of course, was because of Obadiah Stane because he basically wanted to kill off Tony Stark and take over the company. So, then, so would he? But so then, Obadiah would have taken over Stark Industries. Yeah. Therefore, we wouldn't have had any Iron Man armors at all. We wouldn't have had Nick Fury recruiting anybody, which would have left the whole concept of Avengers, the first Avengers movie, screwed. Yeah. Because Cap. But, well, only just t- trust Tony because he knew his dad. He wouldn't trust Thor because obviously Thor is Thor. Uh, Hulk. He wouldn't have trusted anybody as well because, again, he knew Tony Stark. And he. Natasha wouldn't have stayed because she wouldn't have been used as a spy. Well, she would have. I suppose she would have been used as a spy on Obadiah Stain. But again, she wouldn't have had a real reason to stay around because the whole reason she was there is because everyone's obsessed with Tony's tech. Yeah. Um, Because technically Tony, although Nick Fury wanted to recruit him, 
he said no, and then he decided to just like party crash the whole Avengers thing. Like he wasn't fully invited. Yeah. Technically, the only people that were invited were Cap because he was already there, and Hulk. Yes. So the entire Avengers movie would have been a lot different. If anything, I don't think anyone would have survived. The Chitauri invasion would have like completely decimated New York and so on. I mean, Thor, to a degree, would have had he be able to do so much. But given at that point in time, he thought his hammer was the reason behind his abilities instead of knowing it was part of him. I'd argue there must have, there would have been some way Loki could have destroyed the hammer because it's Loki, like he finds a way eventually. So then Thor could have got captured. <sighs> Every scenario where we have these like discussions, it's the bad guy finds a way of enslaving the entire Earth. <laughs> it's the way it's going to go, but I mean... Especially now that you brought up four, it's just reminding me of probably one last one, which we'll probably wrap up with. And you said about what if Hella came back sooner, but how much sooner in which film? Which film? Hmm. Doesn't have to be just in four, it can be any film. Uh, um, I would have said for Thor The Dark World. If yeah. anything, that would have been a better plot line that she came back than dealing with the Dark Elves, because that was a terrible movie. Oh, God, that was boring. <laughs> but you could have had like the idea that Loki was trying to redeem himself because he knew that he'd done wrong by invading Midgard. So Thor puts down his guard, like, lets down his guard, which then attracts the attention of Hela, because obviously she keeps an eye on everybody. Odin dies, like, let's get rid of Odin. He's not been useful. And while Loki and Thor are trying to reconcile and trying to basically figure out the whole reason behind the like, Tesseract, because the Tesseract only came about because of Odin and Captain America, technically. Yeah. That would have introduced the whole Infinity War saga sooner. But I wouldn't have had her destroy Asgard. I'd have her trying to pursue the Aether because obviously... The Aether got locked away because Odin's dad, Bor, was the reason why it got locked away. So you could have had Hela try to infiltrate the Dark Realm to try and get the Aether to try and rework reality to her dark desires or whatever. You could have had her mum, if it is her mum, because I... I doubt it's the same mum. I got the feeling it's somebody else that's Hela's mum because there's no way she's so dark and twisted from her. But if it is her mum, fair enough. She could have tried to be consoling, could have tried to like stop her from taking over. <laughs> she dies, so that stays consistent. Like that stays consistent at least. And then obviously Thor and Hela fight. It could have revealed the whole concept that the idea that Thor and the hammer, the hammer's tool, not the actual power itself, kind of play out similar to Ragnarok, but I don't even know if we'd need the whole Sakaar thing at all, because obviously Thor hadn't gone off planet at that point. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was cool to see Sakaar, but it was more of a Easter eggy thing than it was anything else. Yeah, for sure. So then you could have Loki and Thor battle Hela and basically, although I do like Surta the, being the one to destroy Asgard, I think it would have been more poetic if either Thor or Loki had like a, like a self-destruct thing for Asgard to basically say, right, screw you, you're not having this, we're off and go from there. Yeah. Because then you could have the Asgardians, not, yeah, the Asgardians travel to try and find safety. They could have bumped into the Guardians of the Galaxy, which would have made it a bit more interesting. Because obviously, the only way we met them was just because Thor was floating in space. Yeah. So you could have <laughs> had the Asgardians come across the Guardians of the Galaxy. You could have had quite a few banter moments. 
And then you could have brought the Guardians to Earth sooner because then obviously Thor knows about Midgard and Star Lord coming from Earth. They could have then obviously understood the whole idea of the Infinity Saga. And then eventually it would have led into perhaps the Thor gets his actual weapon because the only reason why Stormbreaker wasn't finished was there wasn't enough Uru metal in the first place. Yeah. So given the fact that Idri wasn't like abducted by Thanos and didn't have his hands covered in Uru, he would have had enough to create Stormbreaker and it would have looked a lot better than what it was. Yeah, because that's not what it looked like for the comics. <laughs> no, like there was concept art, but again, with all things concept art, it never really happens. Of course not, which is another episode we've got to talk about in the future. <laughs> of course, but <laughs> I think that's enough of us ranting about what is today. Well, we've got through about four or five, four, five or six uh, fan fictions or what ifs, if you like. So it just kind of, it just kind of makes you think, like, because oftentimes, folks, we sometimes struggle week to week to find a subject, but there's infinite amount of possibilities of fan fictions or what ifs. There's infinite possibilities which we can explore. And obviously, if you have any yourself, which you may want to discuss or even chat about in the comments with us. And please pop them down below, as we would love to hear them. And thank you so much for anybody who's watched this since, or watching this in the future. So, thanks again for joining us. It's two dudes and a furry little guy called Boris Johnson. He loves us, but not by much. <laughs> we'll be back same time next week. Stay safe, everybody. And